help you keep from fuel going everywhere. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this for everybody, but you just kind of no God, no God, please blow no, no, your fuel no, back into your fuel tank. No! Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tastes like race gas. What's up guys, welcome to another episode from Go-Kart Academy and 893 Motorsports. Today, we're going to be doing a full breakdown and monthly deep clean of a Praga Cadet cart. This is actually Joseph's cart that he's been running in the races. And so we wanna make sure not only that do we clean it well, but we ensure that all of the parts are cleaned inside and out. Now, remember to go back to our previous couple videos where we do a session cleaning or a after a track day cleaning with an OT cart, OTK Cadet Cosmic cart, as well as a Praga cart if you have one of those. But today we're just gonna be focusing on taking a, doing a full breakdown and full monthly cleaning on this cart right here. So today we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the front fairing, front bumper, side pods, rear bumper, engine, axle assembly, and then also with the engine, it will be a couple different things. We'll do a breakdown of how to take those off depending on what engine mounts you have. Uh, and then we'll get into the cleaning. Awesome, let's do it. Tool time. <laughs> So we're going to go over the tools here, guys, that you're going to need for the breakdown of uh, this deep clean. So optional, you can use a impact drill cordless. You're going to need an 8 millimeter. You're going to need a 5, 10 millimeter deep well, ratchet, 17 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and depending on your cart, you'll use a bigger um, ratchet for the front axle front axle stubs. So uh, we'll go over it. So for an engine removal, you're gonna need an eight millimeter T-handle. You can use a regular Allen wrench as well. Uh, it just might be a little bit harder to get in there. For side pods, I like to use the 10 millimeter box end. You also use a five millimeter T-handle Allen wrench or regular again. Rear bumper, 17 millimeter box end works. Wheels and tires, you can use a 10 millimeter with a deep well and a ratchet, or we can grab our impact and use that. For the front of this Praga, we're gonna use a ratchet and either a 19 or 22 millimeter socket to take, it, take off the wheels due to it not having standard hubs like an OTK does. So as we begin our deep cleaning on this Praga go-kart, we're going to start with the front fenders as well as the front, uh, fairy? front fairing, maybe <laughs> the front fairing here, <laughs> as well as the side pods and the bumper. After that, we're going to focus on taking off the wheels and then the axle and engine. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't think, uh, you know, there's some other things that we can zoom in on. Yep. So guys, as Peter's taking off the side pod, I'm working here on the wheels in the rear. These come off with just your standard 10 millimeter nuts. Come on, man, I'm like halfway done. I know. All right, it's all right, I got all the easy stuff. Slow and steady, man. Wins the race. Wait, no, that's not true. Not in karting. The fastest wins the race. <laughs> Same as I always say, just put all the hardware back in place where it came off. That way you have it when it comes back. This is a good time to actually look at. We have bent cotter pin. Ooh, no good. So we'll, uh, we'll get a replacement for this. Um, and we'll put it back on. These are pretty cheap too. They're only like a buck. I think they're even less than that, depending. Here we have, we've taken off the first Praga side pod here. Super deep clean, by the way, uh, with Motul Cleaner. We did a review on Motul Cleaner versus WD-40. And who was the winner? The Motul Cleaner was the winner as far as getting stuff clean, but um, definitely price was a little bit more. Yep.
So guys, we removed the bolts uh, from the side pod to the side pod support. We're just gonna lift this off. Ooh, we can see all the GGs on this. Ooh, it's pretty dirty. So we'll get to a deep clean on this, you know, later when we can dig it more into these. So now we have the rear wheels removed. We have the side pods, the front bumper, as well as the rear bumper and the wheels removed. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna be remo removing the axle as well as the engine. Next guys, we're gonna go ahead and remove our rear axle assembly, our engine, make sure we're unplugging everything from the engine, uh, throttle cable, all the electronics, things like that, um, that will go to the engine. We'll also remove the front wheels and um, kind of go from there. So let's get to it. So right now I'm using a 13 millimeter with an extension on an impact gun. You can actually use a ratchet if that's all you have. And we're just gonna back these out slowly. That one is a little bit tight. So we'll do this, hit it again, there we go. That axle will drop. Set these in the seat so you don't lose them. We're gonna remove the rear caliper from our axle using a five millimeter Allen, twisting slowly. And we don't want to lose these bolts. So we're gonna lift that off of there. Pull the bolts out, like I always said, feed them right back in to the axle so we know what went where. And I like to kind of set this aside up and away so it's not scratching the frame, just sitting there nice and stable. We're gonna come back to the other side here, feed our impact through the sprocket carrier, back it out, make sure we grab all the parts. We'll set all these parts right back in the seat. We'll go ahead and loosen the motor mount so we can slide our engine back and remove the chain from the rear sprocket. Kind of set that here to the side. Next, we'll just lift this out of here gently. Best to have a friend, but if he's holding the camera <laughs> and we'll kind of like lay this here so we um, don't lose anything. So we're going to set this to the side now, guys, and we'll uh, clean it up and then we'll reinstall it back in. Next, guys, we're going to go ahead and remove our engine. We'll go over what you need to remove and unplug from the engine before you actually remove it from the go-kart. So I like to start with, we'll pull off the spark plug cable. There we go. I set that inside. Next, we'll go with the throttle cable. This is gonna be a little bit tough to see, but there's a spring here. Pull up on the spring and lift the throttle and your throttle cable should slide out. There's a little nub there that holds onto the throttle on the carburetor. So we're just gonna leave this hang. We'll set this spring over to the side. Next, we'll take a 10 millimeter and loosen up for this mini Swift. We'll loosen the throttle cable stay slash holder unit thing here. Hold on to that nut as we spin the throttle cable off of the mount here. Yeah. 
Again, like I always say, put the nut back over so we have it when we go to put this thing back together. That'll kind of hang to the side. We're gonna need a flathead to remove this hose clamp or loosen it to take off the air box. We're gonna set this over to the side. This is a good thing. Look inside, see how much oil. There's a little bit of oil and fuel in here. So we wanna wipe this out and uh, clean the air filter while we're at it. Next guys, we're gonna remove our connections to the starter on this Mini Swift. Because it's a tag, it has wires that attach for the starter unit. You have five millimeter. I'm gonna break this one loose. There we go. Spin it out a little bit more. Hold on to that washer and remove the connection. I like to, again, put it back in loosely. There we go. Next, we're gonna need a Phillips head. You know, peel back this rubber boot that protects this connection from the elements. Use a Phillips head just to get in there and remove, loosen that until it comes out. Push down. You see this little screw just popped out here, guys. And uh, I like to, again, put it back in. Let me slide up the boot. Thread it back into the threaded hole. Make sure not to cross thread because that will not be fun later. So we'll set that again to the side over here. Next, we're gonna come over to this side. On this mini Swift, there are three bolts covering the clutch group with a five millimeter. Just gonna break those loose, slide them off. As that drops down, guys, we're gonna pull it away. We'll remove the chain and set this to the side for safekeeping. Later, when we do a deep clean on the engine, we will not have to break these bolts off again. So we'll just lightly thread them back into place. Next guys, we'll remove this connector cable, connecting cable from the stator to the coil, as well as this other connector to the stator and the wiring on this. We'll grab our flathead and we'll next remove the fuel line I like to kind of wedge a little bit between. There's a ridge where the plastic hose ends and barely just work it out as you're putting pressure on. You don't want to break the connector to the fuel line. So tech tip guys, um, since this thing has, the fuel line has fuel in it still uh, to help you keep from fuel going everywhere. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this for everybody, but you just kind of no God, no God, please blow no, no, your fuel no, back into your fuel tank. No, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tastes like race gas. Tastes like race gas, guys. I love it. Hey guys, so the final thing we'll do before we move the engine here is we're gonna go ahead and cut these zip ties that are holding our micron and engine hour meter around the spark plug cable. So we'll just untwist these, push them over to the side, pull this one out. Micron does a really nice job of not having to use zip ties because they have this little clip that pops off and slides down. So we'll just untwist these. So now guys, we removed these leads from the Micron. We've taken off the fuel line, air box, all of the electrical systems going to this engine. 
So just gently lift up. I don't like to grab the carburetor. I like to put my fingers underneath the base of the engine and lift up. We'll pull away. Here we go. We have an engine. We're gonna set this to the side and we'll do a deep clean on this as well. We're gonna take off the front wheels. This setup is the style with a front stub axle and no hub. The hub's built into these machined wheels from Praga. Just slide out gently, jiggle a little. Don't lose the spacers. We'll set these around here on the bottom and we'll uh, make sure we remember uh, what spacer sizes we had on the inside versus the outside. And this is a place where we can look to see, okay, we have rust on here. This is gonna keep your wheel from rotating well. So what we'll do is we'll hit this with some sandpaper later and try and clean up all this rust and corrosion. We'll slide on the spacers that we took off. And again, just make a mental note of how many spacers were on the inside and how many spacers on the outside. It's really easy if you need to guys, like I used to like to do, just take a picture, then you know exactly what it is and you can reference it when you're putting it back together. So guys, we've gone ahead and finished taking everything off the cart, side pods, front bumper, front fairing, wheels, rear axle carriage or rear axle assembly. The engine disconnected all of the electricals to it. I'm gonna walk over here and I'll show you the parts, but uh, yeah, we're ready for a deep clean. So guys, as you see, we have our axle assembly sitting here. We have exhaust, side pods, front bumper. We have the rear bumper and the engine here ready to get a deep cleaning. So uh, let's get to it. Hey guys, so we've got the cart all cleaned. We're about ready to put it back together. I wanna to go ahead and address the rust that we have on our stub axles. What I usually use is about a thousand or 1500 grit sandpaper to start out with. A little WD-40 on the sandpaper. And you just wanna work it back and forth in the direction that the wheel will spin. And this will take off any surface rust and help reduce friction when the wheel is spinning. You can see here, it's already working to get off the, all of this corrosion from the moisture that builds up inside the spacers and inside the wheel. So just kind of work it your way around the axle, do the bottom side, even pressure. And if you guys are thinking, why don't you go back and forth like this? Well, the reason that we're doing that is we do not want junk to build up on the axle and create more friction that needs to be on the bearings as they're spinning. So this will keep everything in the same direction as the wheel will spin. Again, easy process using some 1000 or 1500 or even 2500 depending on the severity of the corrosion. Take that off, we'll wipe it down. We see we still, still have a little bit of buildup on there and uh, we'll just hit it again. This time I'm gonna use a 2500. Just try and polish it all off. All right guys, so we have finished cleaning and doing a deep clean on all of the Praga carts, the front bumper, the side pods, the engine, which you guys got to see me uh, working on a little bit, the axle as well as the wheels. So now we're gonna put this entire cart back together and you guys get to watch us. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're starting with, by putting on the rear axle first. Now, why are we putting on the rear axle first? This way we can get our brakes aligned and we'll uh, have every kind of everything lined up. We're actually gonna do a sprocket change. So um, that'll be in here as well. So it's kind of easy to put this on then kind of everything goes around it. Perfect. All right, guys, we have just finished. I hope you enjoyed that speed round of us putting this together. We looked at the videotape and it took us approximately 23 minutes to put this together with four hands. So 
Expect that's probably gonna be about the time that's gonna take you to put it back together. But again, we've just finished our deep clean on this Praga Cadet cart. We've cleaned everything from the front uh, bumpers to the frame, the side pods, the rear bumper, the engine inside, inside, here and outside, as well as the sprocket, the axle, the brake area, as well as the rotor. So this is a full deep clean of a Praga Cadet cart. Anything, anything else that we've done here? No, just when you're putting it all back together, make sure you keep everything tight. Double check and check again. You wanna be safe. You don't want anything coming off on the track. Make sure you put your clips, the safety clips in there or any kind of uh, safety wire that you have pre-drilled for your bolts and things like that. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that, that a lot of you guys out there might do when you're putting carts back together is you'll use a lot of these zip ties. Zip ties are great. However, they're not as good as electrical tape. Electrical tape, here's a small tip for you guys. When it comes to these, because there's so much rattle in the, the cart while they're driving, these things, these zip ties, they'll end up cutting into the wires. And so instead of using zip ties, we highly recommend that you just use um, electrical, electrical tape, tape instead. Yeah. So that's a quick tip for you guys. Uh, other than that, this is the, the full complete build of breakdown as well as putting the cart back together. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or sign up for gokart.academy and leave a comment below in the forum link so we can get to any of your questions that you guys have. Thanks again for joining us here with Go Kart Academy and 893 Motorsports. We're glad that you guys are here with us today. Smash that like button and subscribe guys. We'll see you in the community too. Peace.